Hello, my name is Ossi Mantulahti, and uh, I am representing here the OBS of, uh, of Finland. And uh, we had recently a client asking, uh, how does inventory valuation really work in Udu? And uh, let's go into details, because I am not an accountant myself, and it has always been something that uh, hasn't really been, I haven't really considered to be that, that important. But... Uh, I do the deep dives in, uh, in different UDU modules, so it is time to uh, explain the inventory valuation in UDU for non-accountants. And in this presentation, uh, what we are doing is that I am presenting this, uh, this problem in first in PowerPoint. In the PowerPoint, I will be explaining the uh, principles and the uh, and what how uh, to approach the problem and uh, what each uh, action does. Next thing, uh, we will we will take a look at the UDU and we would uh, we would uh, look how uh, each step really impacts uh, inventory valuation on UDU and how to see it. We all we also will be covering. The difference between uh, Udu version 14, 15, and 16, because there are some differences there. And uh, now that Udu, uh, uh, with Udu 16 uh, publishing, this is actually important because Udu has uh, now published a new pricing scheme. And according to this pricing scheme, more and more companies can benefit from the accounting application, even though that they may not do the actual accounting on uh, Udu itself. So uh, they still have the accounting application and this is the key for uh, uh, for seeing the uh, inventory valuation. So let's get to it. Uh, first, a couple of words about the preparations in, uh, and principles in order to see the uh, inventory valuations. Inventory valuations in Udu are based on the uh, on uh, two possible uh, ways of doing the uh, valuations. First uh, is a manual valuation. In this, manu um, uh, if you want to do the uh, valuation in a manual way, the system expects uh, that the accountant goes into Udu system and writes uh, the uh, the value of the inventory every month or so. In the, uh, account, using the accounting application. This is the default behavior, and uh, it's called, some, for some reason, standard. And I have no idea why, uh, why Udu works that, like, like that way, because it doesn't si uh, simply uh, doesn't make any sense. Uh, well, I, I would actually call a manual something like that. Don't fo uh, follow the inventory valuation at all. So uh, the automatic is the way to go. Uh, but uh, when going automatic, there are two. Uh, you have to decide. How do you want to uh, do you want to do it automatically? Uh, do you want to use the first in first out principle or average cost? We will get back to those uh, in a bit uh, bit later on. But uh, what you should know is that uh, that um, inventory valuation is uh, managed in Udu in uh, product categories, and it is it is a global setting. Well, if you have multiple companies, those can have different different. Uh, valuation methods, but the categories are uh, are global for one Udu company, and they are not warehouse specific. So it is not possible to uh, do the valuation in one warehouse using the manual and the, on, the, uh, on the other warehouse automatic, automatic way. So essentially what we need to do, we need to create one uh, new category and assign products for this category or alter the all category. If you try to do this in Udu, you uh, typically uh, encounter uh, an error. And this is because uh, Udu uh, does not come with a predetermined set of accounts for inventory valuation. The inventory valuation, in order to set it up, you have to use uh, the uh, you have to add actually three different account accounts there. Number one is the inventory value. 
Number two is the uh, stock input account, and number three is uh, stock output account. The uh, stock input and stock output are uh, are uh, interim accounts, and they all go through uh, the uh, inventory valuation uh, journal. So, 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 uh, in order to make, uh, not, not to mess up the already existing accounts, what we have done is that we have created these new accounts and uh, we also have set them to be able to be reconciled. So, uh, just to make things easy. And we can actually see the accounts uh, created here. So, just in the accounting and chart of accounting. And we have created 1531 as interim value, 1532 purchases interim value, and 1533 as sales interim value. Now, to see the inventory value, there are two uh, possible ways. First one is using the uh, ge uh, general ledger in accounting. And there is another way uh, to see the inventory value, and it is with the inventory application. There is an inventory valuation uh, feature uh, that is open in the reporting reporting menu there. And here's a, there's a difference between uh, in Udo 16. I'll get back to that a little bit late, later on because it's it's so new. But uh, let's. Uh, but uh, we will, in this video we will mostly be following uh, the accounting reporting general ledger. And this is important. This is really really one of the key uh, key takeaways from this presentation. In order to do the proper inventory value, uh, valuation uh, following, you have to follow a certain set of principles for uh, the, uh, establishing the value chain. If you uh, don't follow this, you are getting very, very messed up at inventory valuation, and uh, it's, uh, it's not something that you, you would like to have. So, mm, First, uh, you have to uh, order something. You have to order in order for the inventory value to be uh, to, to be set. You then uh, next step is that uh, you accept the delivery. Once you accept the delivery, essentially you validate the delivery. You see the uh, the interim value already in the accounting. Vendor sends a bill of their uh, products, and once you accept and post post this, uh, then the uh, values are already uh, visible in the inventory value accounts that we just created, and it is also visible as an expense. You pay the vendor bill, and now you are you are getting already the matching of the expense and value. But what the last part what is is missing is that you have to enter. Uh, a bank account. You have to enter an uh, an event in the bank account for this last part to take effect. So once you enter the bank account, you consolidate that and post the entries, then everything is done. And uh, as an Udo consultant, I have seen uh, several Udo installations where the value establishing has not been properly set. So uh, this is actually a big thing that you have to follow all the steps through and uh, there's all, there's also all, 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 of course there's a possibility for automation but if you don't do it then uh, you are not getting the uh, correct inventory value and it confuses uh, confuses it's very confusing so let's uh, look at the uh, steps <coughs> how they are supposed to be done uh, so uh, we make an or make a purchase uh, you accept the purchase and once what happens is that once the uh, delivery is accepted, that's the, the point where you will be seeing already the first impact on the uh, on the inventory value. And we can actually see the, uh, the account 1531 here, which is the inventory value uh, showing the debit and uh, debit balance. You also see the same as interim as uh, as a credit. And since Udu is, a, uh, is a double bookkeeping, you are always matching credit and debit here. Once the vendor sends the bill, we can mark the uh, mark the uh, the uh, invoice to be paid. And I think behind no, it's on the next slide. We can see actually this already or uh, uh, in the general ledger. You will see it the, on the purchase accounts. And and uh, mm, let's go on on the next one because yeah. 
because uh, the invoice needs to be marked as paid. That's an important thing. Uh, if you don't have the bank account set up, uh, bank account uh, synchronized uh, set up uh, uh, with Odoo uh, in an automatic manner, uh, then the uh, invoice is not automatically marked as paid. You have to mark it as paid, and it's uh, uh, it's uh, still missing one more step, which is the reconciliation. So once you mark the invoice paid, it is marked as in payment state. And once it is in, in payment, this is something that, uh, that might confuse also people in, uh, in the Uru world, because even though the, uh, the ribbon is green, this is not the end of the process. This only means that you have marked it to be paid, but it is still under process. It is not yet fully closed. So what you have to do is that you have to create a bank statement showing that money transfer has actually happened in the account and uh, here we can actually see how the, how it is done i will show it is uh, this all in, uh, all in udu so you will actually see the steps yourself but uh, this uh, the bank statement account is something that you have to uh, you can create manually or if the, if udu is connected to your bank account and it is just synchronized uh, if udu is not able to uh, able to match the uh, the bank account and uh, Udo event, then you are getting this kind of uh, this kind of dialogue, where you actually have to uh, match that this is the Udo event and this is the bank account event, and now these are, uh, these are uh, these are matched for each other. This is like you can think of this like a, uh, like an ERP Tinder where you are making matches. Okay, that was cringe. But once you have done it, and once you have validated and posted that uh, that um, reconciliation, then the ribbon of the invoice finally changes to as paid. And now that's the end of the process. So then we can actually see, now I'm going to move, move my face. So you can actually now see that the, uh, the debit and credit are in are correctly set in the inventory valuation. And this screen, uh, and uh, we can actually see that the balance of the inventory value uh, will be showing the increase and decrease of the uh, real inventory, and that's where you should be looking at the inventory value. We're gonna take a look at the live system where uh, you you get a better idea in a minute. But before going into there, I'd like to explain a principle first about the purchases with uh, multiple values, and this is quite common. Let's say that I have this. Uh, I have this mug, coffee mug, and it's, it's called Taika. It's a product made by Itala, fancy mug. Increased productivity by, by 10, uh, 10, 10 uh, or 20%. So, the problem is that as a merchant, your source inventory uh, prices vary. Uh, we have inflation, uh, or uh, you can find another alternative vendor, but the, uh, the price fluctuates. So, therefore, uh, how you should pay, take in, this into account in the inventory, it means that uh, you, you have to select the valuation method on how, how the inventory value is managed. You can set it as, as first in, first out, or, or FIFO. And what it means that uh, you get, uh, get goods for your inventory, but when you are selling, uh, Udo takes always the, uh, the first, the oldest product, and sells that and deducts its value from the inventory value. Second is average, uh, average, and it is average purchase cost of all uh, all the purchases. Mm. Personal preference, accounting preference, whichever whichever can be done. Last one is the last in first out, and uh, it is um, it's a bit of peculiarity. It has uh, it's not very widely used, and some uh, countries. Uh, or to be more exact, some accounting standards have uh, legal limits or uh, standard limits on this one. For example, in, if you want to do the, you are uh, allowed to do it, for example, in the, in the United States accounting, but in the case that your inventory valuation must uh, comply with the uh, IFRS, then you cannot use it. IFRS 
uh, uh, rules of, uh, do not allow using the LiPo values. And the problem is that you might actually end up with, with obsolete inventory, and then you have a problem, what, to, what do you want to do with that one? So uh, let's just stick with FIFO or AVOC. Uh, in the example, uh, I purchased a good for uh, this uh, type of uh, uh, mug for 10 euros. And then uh, I am assuming that the price uh, price is increasing to uh, to 15 euros uh, per unit. So therefore, what we will be what we have is first 10 euros, then uh, 30 euros purchase. We will have three three items: 10, 15, 15. And what does that mean? It means that our inventory value should be now uh, 40 euros. And you can actually see it right here. So we have we have purchased this. First with 10 euros, and then the second one, uh, two items for 30 euros. And uh, we can see that the inventory value balance is 40 euros. Okay, so a question. If I sell this mug for a price that is uh, higher than my, my acquisition cost, what is the impact on inventory value? Nothing. Let's assume that I sell the good for uh, 200 euros. It's a nice design, design mug, so yeah, why not? And uh, I have purchased it for 10 euros. I am making 190 euros uh, profit. But what is the uh, what, but the real question here is that uh, what is the impact on my inventory valuation? And it is nothing. I am uh, following the FIFO principles. I am simply taking the oldest item in my stock and uh, I, uh, I deliver that to the client. So I, I reduce my inventory value by 10 euros and it is totally independent on the sales price of the product. So even though I have three, uh, three mugs, each costing, uh, each has having a value sales value of 200 euros, my inventory is should not be valued according to the sales price, but for the acquisition price. So uh, the customer, once they have received the, uh, received the good, they, are, uh, they will be getting the invoice. And this also follows the same process as the, as the purchases. You see that there is a green ribbon showing that the uh, that uh, once you register the payment, then uh, we uh, we see that the uh, that uh, this invoice is now in payment. But this is just a mark that uh, system has been informed that this will be now paid. We don't yet see it as being paid. So. Uh, now, this is a lo lot of text for the small screen, but uh, this is essentially the, uh, the whole balance sheet, balance sheet uh, general ledger uh, for the uh, over overall status. Let's look at this uh, on the live, uh, live system in a, in a minute. But before going there, there is uh, another way of actually looking at the inventory value, and it's with the inventory application. So. If you are not an accountant, you don't really care about uh, that much about accounting, but you just need, need this data, uh, then the question is that, uh, that how do I uh, see the inventory value? Well, you see the inventory value from the inventory application reporting inventory uh, valuation, and uh, there you can actually see that I have now purchased this, uh, you, uh, the oldest star on, on, uh, at bottom. So I have... A, I have purchased one uh, mug for 10 euros, then I have purchased two units for 30 euros, I have sold one for uh, 10 euros, and the value of my inventory does is 30 euros. The beautiful thing about, the, uh, about this Udo is that you can actually see the inventory uh, at a certain date, and this is something that your accountant will love you for, because then uh, it is easy for them, if they don't use Udo as an accounting solution, to mark uh, these as... Uh, they can actually uh, bring this valuation into uh, into official uh, government accounting accounting and reporting. So that's the uh, theory. Let's take a look at the uh, at the 
would do system where I can show uh, everything on the on on uh, system and uh, and and uh, we what we will be doing here is that let's open the uh, general ledger uh, as a side tab. So I go here and reporting and I go to I open a new tab for general ledger and I do this because I want to show you. Uh, the impact on uh, what uh, what is uh, here. The uh, if you want to practice this, it is highly recommended that you uh, set up a totally empty system. Uh, you install the uh, a chart of account of your own country. In this case, it may be looking a bit clear, uh, strange because it is Finnish uh, accounting, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, the uh, principles are the same everywhere, and I will be translating the uh, translating. The account names in 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 uh, as, as we go on. So let's let's go and take a look at the uh, system. So here now we have the report, and as you see, the general ledger is uh, is empty, nothing here. And we can go to the uh, go to inventory, and we can see that there are no, there is uh, there is one product created, and it's uh, it's this mug, and it has fifty euros price but not, nothing else. We can see that it has the product category coffee mugs. And uh, now we can see actually the accounts here. So the accounts are found from accounting, configuration, and chart of accounts. And let's take a look at the 15 accounts. So Udo uh, brings already uh, account uh, items and stock. But this is the basic account. I have not created. I have not touched touched this. Uh, it it's uh, also uh, creates an account fifteen thirty, which is good. But in order to not to mess up with uh, these already pre-made accounts, this is actually one of the best practices in in, in Udo. Don't touch uh, the already existing accounts. It's better to uh, just to create your own. Uh -huh. Because. The accounts in Udo are connected uh, to journals, and if you don't set up the uh, the uh, link between accounts and journals correctly, then you are in high risk of messing up with the system. It's the same thing, uh, same principle as with the uh, with the Udo's uh, roots of warehouses. Easy, uh, very easy to mess things up if you don't uh, if you make a simple mistake. So. Uh, I have created now these three accounts: inventory value, inventory interim, uh, inventory interim incoming, inventory uh, interim outgoing, and we will be using these uh, during the demonstration. So let's go to purchase, and here we create an order for uh, from our vendor for one coffee mug of ten euros, and here we go. Uh, we can now save it. And we can confirm the order. So, what is the impact on our general ledger right, uh, right now? That's correct. There is no impact. Why? Because uh, we just made an order, but this is uh, we haven't received anything yet regarding this order. Uh, so, uh, in Udo, we have to uh, we have to receive the goods before they are visible in the inventory. So let's go here and we validate the reception of the goods. And now, if you go to general ledger, now we see something important here. Mm. Yeah. I added the taxes. Yeah, I, I made one mistake here, and it was uh, not to clear out the taxes. Uh, well, this is a test. Uh, it, it will have the taxes. The reason why uh, we have these, uh, this, uh, when we are doing this, this kind of demonstration and, uh, and trials with the clients, is that uh, we would like to get rid of the taxes because they actually complicate things. We can actually uh, cancel that invoice, uh, that uh, that that so it doesn't mess up with the system. So let's 
Yeah, we can see that the reception is done. We can return it. Yeah. All right. So now the general lecture should, should yeah. Okay, let's do, do it again. And this time uh, we we yeah. Now it is out of the system. All right. So 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 we purchase the purchase goods. Okay, so this is uh, for of course in the in the live system you cannot remove the tax ta the uh, taxes, but uh, in the in the demonstration when you are trying out these things uh, to make your uh, life easier, let's remove the tax obligation. So uh, it's uh, it, it is uh, so so much more easier to see uh, see our 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 uh, general ledger. All right, we confirm the order, and then we uh, then we uh, re receive the goods. We validate, and this is now coming to our inventory. So now we go to general ledger and forget about the one and two. Those are, not, uh, those are the uh, ones that we, that we have already returned. The, uh, the important thing is that we can actually see that this is now showing the, uh, the uh, goods in, uh, the, in, uh, in the inventory. All right, so uh, what is missing now is that we have to show uh, the uh, invoice. So let's create the invoice for the goods, and we can confirm the invoice as well. We need to put the date here. We can make the bill reference here. It can be like this. 11. Confirm. And we can register that we have, we have paid, paid this. And the memo is going to be in, uh, important because uh, with that one, we actually uh, match the payment. So we create the payment and now the, uh, this uh, is uh, uh, entering the in-payment state. So let's go to the general ledger and refresh it. And what we can see here, we can see the purchase, uh, purchases, purchase uh, debts, purchase credit, and uh, we can see the imp impact here. The important thing is that we can uh, the, uh, we can already see that the balance is showing uh, already this correctly, so we can uh, we have the value uh, for uh, ten euros here. So next step, once this is in payment, uh, we have to go to the accounting application here, and now we have to create a bank statement. So let's create the bank statement, and we start with the balance of 1,000 euros. That's our uh, cash for, uh, for running the business. And we add a line. I am putting the label here because this can be like a reference information for the payment. And I set the partner to be the OSI vendor. And we have uh, made a 10 euro payment for this partner. But it must be negative. So uh, if you are creating these accounting entries manually, you have to uh, take into account that this is, the, uh, this is going out of the account. So therefore, you are reducing the uh, account balance. And if you click outside, Udo is now showing that the computed balance is 990 euros. So we have to enter this manually here. All right. Now this looks good. We can save it. We can post it. And we can reconcile it. And if we are lucky, Udo matches uh, the event in Udo with the event in our bank account. And, uh, and we can close that, that uh, book. But if Udo doesn't, doesn't uh, recognize it, uh, then we have to manually uh, reconcile it. So if you see this, one statement lines have been reconciled automatically, then you are in luck. Udo, uh, Udo's uh, artificial intelligence or whatever uh, noticed that these go together and it was uh, the model was good enough to uh, to check that this uh, this can be now reconciled so <clears throat> we can now go and see the uh, impact in the general lecture 
refreshing here. And now we can see a lot of uh, lot more stuff here. So now we can see that the balance uh, balance of the bank account. Okay, the start start balance is uh, is not uh, is not correct, but uh, that's not important. We can see that we have made the payment for ten euros, uh, and uh, we can see uh, that all the uh, all the payments are recorded here. The important thing for the inventory valuation purposes is this one, and uh, we can actually see that we have debited this account now with 20 euros we have uh, taken out because I uh, I returned the first one uh, to avoid the tax confusion from the, uh, from this one and our balance is 10 because that is what we paid for to get the one item there so next thing what we want to do is that we want to purchase now uh, two more items but let's assume that the price has changed. So we can see that the product is showing that the price is now 10 euros per, per unit. And uh, I didn't enter this. Udo automatically calculates this one. So let's uh, purchase two more items here. Ooh. And now the uh, unit price is 15 euros. And to be, uh, to be clear, let's remove the taxes. So purchase with a different price that was there. Confirm this order. Receive products. Validate the reception. Apply. The goods have arrived. And now let's go and take a look at the uh, look at the accounting and general ledger. So what has happened here is that we can see that uh, the balance of uh, or the value of our inventory is now 40 euros. Why is this 40 euros? Let's see. So here we can see that I have now purchased, uh, purchased the first item uh, for 10 euros, but then the second uh, purchase has been 30 euros. So therefore 10, uh, 10 plus 30 equals 40 and that's the balance of the uh, of our inventory. Uh, once we can actually now go and finish up with the uh, with the uh, purchase by paying paying the vendor. And we pay. We register the payment. We pay thirty euros. And now we can see that this is also in payment. By the way, uh, the we can see that the second second payment here is showing that this is paid. So this is, this is now closed. This process is now being completed. So now we go to the bank. We create the second statement. And we add the second transaction. It's 30 euros. And we can actually put, uh, and by the way, you can see that I am deliberately uh, trying to see that, the, uh, that uh, to enter this information in a vague, for a vague way, because I don't want to, uh, I want, I'm trying uh, to avoid that the uh, artificial intelligence matching can automatically match this. Let's see if I am uh, successful. So, the calculated balance is now 960 euros. So here we go. We can save this. And we can post this. And we can now reconcile it. And here we can now see that this is uh, this is now showing that uh, I don't understand uh, that Udu, uh, what, what this screen is now telling is that Udu sees that, OK, I have created this uh, this 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 uh, payment in the bank account, but uh, as an Udu, I have no idea what is the uh, real uh, business event in Udu. So we can try to uh, look it look it for here, and we can see that Udu is suggesting this one. So here we can see that this payment is registered but not reconciled. We click here, 
And now we can see that the credit and debit are balancing each other out. And now we can validate it and enjoy the rainbow map. So here, now we have reconciled the transaction. We can close the statement. So this is, uh, that was the, uh, the uh, end of the process for the second purchase. And let's look at the impact in the general ledger. So now we, we can see that the uh, balance uh, has been uh, established as 40 euro, euros. We can see that the interim interim value is uh, account is minus 40. It doesn't really matter because uh, this is now visible in in the real inventory value. They have simply moved from here to here. We can see that this is 10 euros, 30 euros uh, in the credit uh, column, and this is 10 euros and 30 euros in the debit uh, de de debit column. We can see that the payments have been uh, have been made 10 euros and 10 euros are here and 30 euros and 30 euros so we are we are matching the matching the bill and bank a bank statement and bank account is showing uh showing these as well purchases credits are showing equally these as well and the purchases uh purchases are showing these so we have now inventory value of 40 euros. So therefore, let's go and uh, and and uh, sell one of these items. And we will sell it for 200 euros. And again, remove the uh, taxes. Confirm. And now we have to deliver, deliver it to the customer in order to see an, uh, a change in the value of the inventory. So far, uh, there is uh, not yet any, any value in the, in the uh, general ledger. Uh, we can see that it's, uh, it's not even visible in the sales. Why is it not visible in the sales? Because we have not delivered anything. We have just agreed that, yes, this will be done. So we can see that it's now confirmed that we haven't sent the invoice, we haven't delivered the goods. Let's deliver the goods. Yep, goods delivered. And we can see now the change in the, uh, in the inventory. So now our balance is 30 euros. Why is it 30 euros? It is because we have, uh, we still, uh, we sold, sold essentially this item that I, I am highlighting here. We, showed, uh, we, uh, we sold the oldest item in our inventory, and uh, <clears throat> then we, ha we have to uh, do the rest of the process. So let's go and send the invoice, create the invoice, confirm, and we can actually register the payment here as well. So now I am uh, I I have I have registered the payment. It's time to go to the accounting application and uh, match that this is now coming to the bank. So creating the bank statement. This is I think this is third. And we have now selected the client. I think it was something like um, sales order number one, and it is uh, 200 euros. And now this is a positive number because uh, we are receiving money in the account. So, and Udu is kind enough to show that uh, what is our computer balance supposed to be. So let's enter that one here. And we are ready to go for the next step, which is to post and see that uh, can Udu uh, match this automatically. Let's go reconciling. And here, uh, yep, this is a bit different screen. So as you saw, uh, I uh, I selected this, uh, this partner. And therefore, Udu is now suggesting to me that uh, I think, uh, this is Udu's way of saying that I think these should go together. You don't have to change these. Uh, if I click here, then I have to, uh, I can select select it manually, the event. But this is now uh, these uh, these um, events in the accounting go together. So I can just validate it here. 
and read Bowman K, so we are good with reconciled this transaction. So how is this visible in the accounting? Let's go and see. So first, we can see that the inventory value is correctly set as, as 30 euros. We sold the oldest 10 euro item. Uh, then we, uh, we can see that the, uh, the interim account is now clear, uh, is uh, at minus 40, which is correct. Uh, interim outgoing is showing that it, uh, it has been delivered to the client. Uh, the accounts payable of 1,700 shows that we have uh, sold for, for, we have created at the 200 euros invoice and we have received uh, 200 euros payments. So debit and credit are balancing each other out. Outstanding recipients, no problem here. We can see the same, uh, same here. It is just showing this from a bit different, different point of view. Uh, I think this is... Um, uh, just a different type of accounting or do accounting. For some reason, there are the same numbers appear, appear many places. But we can see that the outstanding payments uh, is showing that this is now correct as well. Bank, bank uh, is showing that what events have, to, have had here, uh, I have paid 10 euros, I have paid 30 euros, I have received 200 euros. And the sales is showing this as well. For, for, for the total that I have, to, I have to confess that I have no idea how it is calculated. It's just summing something up, but don't get confused by that one. The important point, what you should be seeing here, is on uh, is on the uh, on this one. And uh, as by and uh, by the way, uh, this is not like a sum of the next ones. So this is not doesn't apply on these so what you are seeing here is uh, that opening of this one uh, that's account 1531 and here are the details that form these sums of debit credit and balance that was a bit confusing as well so uh, <clears throat> the next topic is uh, a return of goods. Let's re, uh, let's see what happens if, if somebody returns the goods. We can go now to the sales application, and we can see that the that yeah, the goods have been uh, have been. Let's let's actually create one one more sale here. Taxes, confirm, delivery, validate. Okay, delivered, and then just create the invoice, create invoice, confirm. <laughs> Registering the payment here. In payment, so next I have to go to accounting. I have to create the statement. Um, All right. So now I have uh, I have sold a second mark for the same client. A bit uh, and reconciling validation. Okay. So I made two sales, and now I can see actually the reporting and general ledger showing the same thing. So why am why is my value showing fifteen euros there? This is because I first uh, the first mark that I sold costed me 10 euros. The second one mark costed me 15 euros and I bought two of those. So my inventory is remaining uh, uh, remaining value is 15 euros. Now let's do something fun. Let's go 
and uh, cancel the uh, return the goods of our first order. So I go to the and uh, for this actually, if you don't know, returning of goods in Udu uh, requires uh, two different processes. One is the return of money, and one is the return of goods. So uh, these are not automatic. These are connected, but very very uh, in a very uh, light format. So therefore, if I want to return the uh, return the product, I now go and deliver, and I click here on the return. By the way, uh, don't ever try to cancel something uh, that or delete something that is recorded already in the Uru inventory. That's not how it is supposed to be working. Uh, you always, when you create some uh, some uh, movement in Uru inventory, in order to cancel it out, you have to uh, issue a credit report or a return of the goods. Uh, that's uh, that's the correct way of of doing it. Once something is written in the Uru books, it is there for good. You cannot take it out. So, but I can uh, I can return the item here, and I can validate now the uh, reception of goods. So now it came back to our inventory. And I can now even go to the invoice. And I can issue a credit note for the customer. I reverse this. And now I confirm it. The process follow of returning money follows the same principle. I have to mark this as uh, registered on the, on the payment. So I register the payment. And uh, I create the memo. I have now uh, sent money to the client or I have said to Udu that I have made, sent money to the client. But I still have to go back to the accounting. And here. I need to create a bank statement. Showing that the client. Hmm, I have now paid 200 euros for the client. And what's missing? Negative symbol. Because uh, money is going out of my account. Save. Post. Reconcile, and Udo is kind enough to know that uh, this is uh, this is the way. Yeah, these these are, uh, are are a match, so I validate this. Rainbow man says everything is good, so let's close the statement and let's go and see the. Uh, okay, here it is. I made a mistake, so the expected balance uh, I didn't set it set it up manually. So I think I have to now reset this to new. Uh, to new. And I have to correct this one, one one six zero. So this is the only uh, only place where you actually can delete this uh, because it uh, Uru didn't accept uh, the uh, entering of the this bank account because the ending balance was incorrect. Now, if you have uh, Uru connected to your bank account, you don't have to do this because Uru is just reading reading these entries. But now that we are in the demo system, we have to do this uh, these calculations manually. Post reconcile validate and yes, now we have finished the process. Let's go and take a look at the general ledger. So the balance is twenty five euros. Where is twenty five euros come from? It was fifteen just a minute ago, and it is because I returned. The first item I selected uh, on uh, on purpose the oldest item, and that item, if you can go, uh, let's go and take a look at the sales app the application. This item was the uh, first item that I purchased. So that one, that good for was from the first very first batch. Therefore. 
the balance is now increased by 15 euros, which was the remaining uh, of the second delivery batch, plus 10 euros from the first batch. Remaining accounts are not that, uh, that interesting uh, for accountants, maybe, but we can see that, uh, that, that uh, they are uh, good. And uh, one of the things that should be, uh, to be taken into note is that that, that uh, this uh, does not actually re uh, reduce the uh, revenue according to Uru accounting. Your accountant may have a, a, another, another point of view for this. But we can see uh, that, uh, for example, uh, in the uh, account 3000, which is the sales, we can see that this is now uh, taking the, uh, the reversal here. For the reversals of the accounts, uh, there is uh, there is uh, also a process called return merchandise author, uh, authorization. So essentially, it is that somebody must accept that the good is returned. You can't just do it like like that, because then it essentially means that that you can uh, uh, take money out of the uh, company. You may have to uh, you may want to uh, authorize this process. Now, vanilla Udo, basic Udo, does not have this feature, but there is a uh, there is very uh, good uh, Udo extension coming from Browsinfo, which costs something like forty euros, and it is uh, highly recommended if you ever need to uh, need to install the return uh, merchandise authorize, authorization module. So, just to summarize, the most important point of this presentation. Uh, it is. It can be seen from this slide. In uh, this, we did it several times here in the in this uh, session. We established how the uh, value establishment process must be done. We have to do an order, sale, or, or return of the goods. Then we have to deliver the value. Then we have to do the vendor or well client bill, and then we have to market paid, and finally we have to uh, make the bank statements. That's, uh, that's the process, that's the important one that we have, to, uh, we have to follow in order to make certain that everything in the, account, uh, in the uh, inventory value is correctly set. We as an Udo consultants have seen several uh, wrongful uh, insta uh, uses of Udo and they are typically because this process is not followed properly. There are some uh, entries that have not been done, uh, you may do the same mistakes as, as I did if your bank account is not connected, uh, that you enter the minus and plus, you don't reconcile uh, the goods in Udo, etc. So, uh, if you didn't uh, didn't uh, use the accounting uh, before, then uh, with Udo 16, it is something that you may want, want to start using because now uh, due to Oro's new pricing, it is all available for everybody. And uh, you also can get an easier view of the inventory by going the inventory and reporting and inventory valuation. And here you can see all the events that have been happening with this, uh, with this mug. And the important thing here is that uh, is uh, the inventory at the date. So let's actually set the inventory at the date at uh, today, but we set it at 48, uh, 49 hours. Just to see, just to demonstrate that this is the situation at this hour. So we can, we are seeing that we are missing uh, the last events here because uh, because uh, I selected a certain time point. And this is something that your accountant might want to, uh, want to see, and they, he will love you to be a, for to be able to pro uh, provide the um, inventory valuation like that. All right, folks, that was a long session, uh, uh, maybe a bit dry topic, but uh, I think, uh, I hope that you enjoyed and learned something from Udo uh, inventory valuation accounting for non-accountants. Thank you all for watching.